Good afternoon and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Paul Harris and I am president of the City Club's Board of Directors. I am very pleased to introduce today's speaker, Joseph A. Aluto, Executive Vice President and Provost of the e. Ohio State University. We are pleased that he is able to represent the university today in replacement of President E. Gordon Gee, who was unable to be here. Dr. Aluto is responsible for the academic progress and reputation of The Ohio State University, an institution whose total enrollment exceeds 60,000, so he has a very, very big job. As the school's chief academic officer, Dr. Aluto is responsible for the administration, coordination, and development of all academic functions of the university. Dr. Aluto held the John W. Berry Senior Chair in Business in the Fisher College of Business, where he served as dean for the 16 years prior to his current role. He earned his bachelor's degree from Manhattan College, a master's degree from the University of Illinois, and his doctorate from Cornell University. He served as dean of the State University of New York at Buffalo School of Management before arriving at Ohio State in 1991. Dr. Ludo is a leading authority on managerial behavior and specializes in corporate performance and leadership. He has lectured widely in China on management issues, pioneered the first Sino-U.S. jointly funded MBA program offered in the People's Republic of China in 1984, has lectured at universities in China, and has been a visible and active advocate for advanced management education and research in China. Dr. Aluto has authored a book and more than 65 articles on those subjects in academic journals, including the Administrative Science Quarterly, the Academy of Management Journal, the Journal of Applied Psychology, and the Industrial and Labor Relations Review. Dr. Aluto has been active as a consultant to various businesses and educational institutions and serves on a number of corporate boards and in various volunteer capacities. I don't know how you have time to do everything you're doing. He's a member of the Academy of Management, the American Psychological Association, the Labor and Employment Relations Association, and the American Association for the Advancement of Science. I am pleased to present on behalf of the City Club of Cleveland, James A. Aluto, Executive Vice President and Provost of The Ohio State University. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, it was a very kind introduction. Now, without any bow ties on this stage, it should be clear that Gordon's not here. <laughs> uh, he always likes to say he's been the president of more universities than anyone else, and that's probably true. Uh, but I, too, have two distinguishing characteristics which you should know about. And the first is that, uh, as far as anyone can tell, I'm the only one in the history of Ohio State to have served simultaneously as interim president and interim provost. Uh, now, that little factoid <laughs> usually results in my wife leaning over and whispering into my ear, it's amazing how much damage one person can do. <laughs> Second, for those of you uh, who are concerned about football, and I gather there are a few of you here based on the questions I was asked, I believe, as far as we can tell, I am the only Ohio State president to ever retire from that position undefeated. <laughs> I am 5-0. and oh. And that's a record Gordon will never be able to break. <laughs> now, of course, uh, Jim Foster invited uh, Gordon to speak, and he asked me to send his regrets on not being able to be with you. And it's certainly my great honor to be here. And what I need to say to you, just in the sense of full disclosure, is that uh, Gordon shared his remarks with me, drafts of his remarks. And so this is really, in a sense, going to be a shared perspective that I, I present today. The City Club, of course, is synonymous with civil discourse, with free inquiry, and intellectual advancement, all of those characteristics, our state and our nation, are much in need of at this point. In fact, civil discourse is a topic that's of much interest and discussion on our own campus. But on this day, at this especially contentious time, with you, I want to think about other issues that are of critical importance to the state of Ohio and to our nation. I want to make the most of this particular gathering because today, in this room, we have exactly the right combination of people to make the kinds of significant decisions the far-reaching changes that will be required for Ohio as we face the next decades. Leaders in industry that accomplish so much and hold even greater promise, entrepreneurs who have the capacity to both see what is needed and then to create 
innovations to meet that future, elected officials and civil servants who devote their lives to the greater good, and my education colleagues from all types of institutions who are working to advance knowledge and to prepare the next generation of leaders. A truly impressive gathering of individuals who together are nothing short of formidable. And now more than ever, this state needs all of us acting in concert in full partnership for the future, and that is really the message for you today. If we think creatively, if we work hard, if we innovate and we collaborate, Ohio will not merely survive, it will thrive and we will triumph. The world of ideas, which is the fundamental currency of education, will forevermore catalyze virtually all social and economic progress. The path forward is wholly tied to the creativity made possible by education and then the partnerships which assure that innovation will flourish. We all know the saying, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. Well, but there's an offensive cynicism in that statement, for I believe that a crisis can clarify priorities and bring what's most important into sharper relief. And I think that's precisely what's happened in this country and around the world, largely because of the turmoil that began in the financial markets now nearly three years ago. All around us, we see escalating human need, more unemployment, home for, uh, uh, foreclosures, more hungry children. The needs are great, and they're everywhere we turn. The impact of these tumultuous times extends to every corner of the world, whether it's education and business and the arts and culture in civil life and in government. We live in a fast-forward world where hairpin turns that make seeing the road ahead very difficult, to say the least. And yet, pulling over is not an option, nor is slowing down really possible. To thrive in the 21st century, institutions of all kinds must seek calculated risks and reach out aggressively to one another in partnership. We must acknowledge that today's survival calculus includes two known constants, unrelenting change and reward for innovation. Any winning strategy will incorporate the understanding that creative potential and intellectual rigor are brought to life only through collaboration. So let me be clear. We have to use this moment of tremendous challenge to our everlasting advantage, and we must build in our state the intellectual infrastructure that will drive that future prosperity. After having spent the last 20 years of my career at Ohio State and working closely with business leaders and others throughout that time, I've come to know that with all certainty, Ohio stands apart from many other states in its public support for education, in well-reasoned investments in the future, in truly dynamic arts and culture, in forward-thinking approaches to growing new industries, and yes, in leading-edge research and development at our universities, at Battelle, at Wright-Patterson, at NASA Glenn, and countless businesses, both small and large. We have all of that and much more. But most important to all of us, we have over 11 million Ohioans, people whose values and whose ideas and approaches to problems are rooted in the very finest traditions of this country. We're tenacious. We care deeply about our neighbors. We prize new ideas. And when our state is struggling, as it surely is now, we don't simply shrug our shoulders and toss up our hands in frustration. Instead, we return to the basics, ingenuity, persistence, and commitment to the common good. All of those traits come from being fir firmly a part of this state. And all of those tra traits enable Ohio to be the incubator of this new knowledge economy, an example for leading the country forward. And fortunately, we already have some very good traction in that regard. In my conversations with colleagues across the country and around the world, I often talk about the Third Frontier program in Ohio. For those elsewhere who are seeking an example of public-private economic development partnerships, this program is by all accounts the most visible model of success and a source of envy. Third Frontier results in job creation, return on investment, and innovation for the future. These are neither academic alchemy nor simply wishful thinking. They come from business and higher education working together to ensure that research collaborations advance knowledge and the human condition and make concrete and indisp indisputable differences for our state's economy. The public's strong support for the program's extension clearly demonstrates its research and its impact. And it's talking about the power of collaboration that makes a difference. And I'd like to spend a little time talking about some examples of that.